Hi, I'm Jeff with Blackout Lighting Console, and this is the full lineup of the latest and greatest products from Lumen Radio's CRMX line. Are they really worth the hype? Let's find out. The Moonlight has been around for four years now and is one of the most popular CRMX transceivers on the market, which means it can either transmit or receive CRMX. It's super versatile to use because it has a built-in battery and a short dongle to the plugs, which makes plugging it into any light very easy and convenient, unlike some receivers that cause issues with certain lights. The obvious pitfall though for the Moonlight is that it has no screen, so information is displayed through a series of lights on the side of the unit. And if you wanna change the mode or unlink the receiver, you better have that handy dandy little quick start guide in your pocket or use the app, which is probably the saving grace of the Moonlight, despite it taking a little longer to configure. The CRMX Toolbox app is great for changing modes, transmission power, and linking or unlinking these. Plus it's super easy to update the firmware and has given the Moonlight a much longer lifespan than other products from other manufacturers. I personally own a kit of Moonlights I mainly use as receivers or in a pinch as an extra universe to transmit. In 2020, Lumen Radio acquired Wireless Solution, which is known for WDMX, and in late 2021 announced their new lineup that incorporated WDMX alongside CRMX the Luna, Aurora, and Stardust. The Luna is essentially the Moonlight, but in a box form factor with better power options. And unlike the Moonlight, which seems to cap out at 100 milliwatts transmission power, the Luna lets you max out at 280 milliwatts. You can go AC or DC in, but it only has Bluetooth to connect to a console or five pin DMX. So you're a bit limited if you plan to use this with your existing network. This could be a decent single universe transmitter for the owner op as it also has DMX out, or if you needed to use this as a solid receiver, you could link it and go DMX out to a grid of lights. But if you want more connectivity options, check out the other models. The Luna is also configured via the CRMX toolbox app like the Moonlight. And once you're good to go, you can simply connect up to the Luna via Bluetooth with blackout, just like the Moonlight. Pretty simple. The Aurora is the step up from the Luna as it now incorporates a nice color screen and Wi-Fi. So now you can connect to the Aurora through a much more robust protocol, Artnet or SACN. I would have loved to have seen an ethernet in, if not a two port ethernet switch on this unit. So that's kind of a bummer that you can't add this into your lighting network that way, but it does still have both DMX in and out and you can actually client into an existing Wi-Fi network, which is super cool. For those of you who are unaware, you are used to using devices that broadcast their own Wi-Fi network that you connect to, like if you're setting up some IoT device, such as a ring security system, printer, or camera. The device acts as an access point that you connect directly to from, say, your phone or computer. The Aurora, and the Stardust have the capability to client into an existing Wi-Fi network. You enter the network name, password, and configure your IP options, and it connects, which means it can now grab data from your lighting network. This is super useful if you have, say, a robust ubiquity setup on a stage that you wanna utilize. Overall, this is a solid one universe transmitter that is well built for set use as it's simple and easy to configure through its color screen. Finally, we get to Lumen Radio's flagship product, the Stardust, which can transmit up to eight universes in CRMX squared. This is the be all end all for everyone in the wireless game right now. And it's a long awaited response to City Theatrical's Multiverse, which came out way back in 2019 with 10 universes of output in one device. Now, for those of you who are like, wait, what? The film industry has adopted Lumen Radio's CRMX protocol as their standard, and thus we almost never hear about City Theatrical Multiverse because it's almost exclusively used in theaters. Unless Astera decides to add a multiverse chip in it, then your only option in the film industry for controlling your lights wirelessly is Lumen Radio CRMX. So don't think you're missing out on anything. The Stardust. First of all, look at how sleek this thing looks. It has a pretty nice form factor, although I never understand how a company can release a product without some 
sort of way to attach this to a C-stand via a baby pin or receiver or stand adapter of some sort. It's like you guys made it 95% of the way there. Why not just make this little accessory that you can sell to everyone for $100? Regardless, it does have an M10 screw on one side and a 3 8 inch on the other side for third parties to create something. If you find a cool bracket, do everyone a favor and link it in the comments below so that we can support their business, please. The Stardust, like the others in the lineup, can take both AC or DC power, giving you versatility to adapt this to your rig, maybe with a battery and a nice box you put together for your kit. It has a USB port for firmware updates and ethernet in. Whew. I wish it had another ethernet port, but Oh well. It obviously wouldn't make much sense to have DMX in, but it could have been nice to have a port or two of DMX out for hardline DMX to something nearby. But this is Lumen Radio who makes wireless products, so if you need hardline DMX, it makes sense that it's not quite in the jurisdiction of this device. The Stardust also has a small 15 minute battery backup, but it is disabled if you have the output power set to max 280 milliwatts. I find it slightly weird it doesn't have Bluetooth as all of the other devices in the lineup do and that's how you easily configure them, but I do respect that it's probably way too much wireless going on in this device already and that would just clutter up the signal. It's easy enough to stick a USB into the back of this and click update firmware. What makes the Stardust unique though is that it can output up to eight universes in CRMX squared, which for all intents and purposes is being able to transmit two universes from a single antenna by splitting the signal. This is currently the only device that can do this because Lumen Radio is holding this feature tight to their chest. When this first came out, people had complained about CRMX squared cutting the transmission range in like half, and I got pretty bummed about it, but Lumen Radio just released a firmware update, and in my tests, CRMX squared actually gave me better results and went further than regular CRMX, which is very exciting. Number one, which is the red is the Stardust paired to CRMX one mode. Number two, which is the white label, that is paired to the Stardust in CRMX two mode. And then the third one is paired to my handy dandy uh, AKS. I am now going to play the same effect on all three devices. So they are doing just an RGB chase and they're all going at the same time. And now I'm going to test the range. So this is the latest Stardust firmware. I'm going to go ahead and walk like this across the stage. As you can see from this video, I took three Astera Helios tubes with built-in CRMX and walked them across the stage into the next stage over through all that metal and brick. Now I'm in the second studio across the way. So this is really kind of in a deep area here. And oh, did you see that? Number one. So I am now through two double doors, has stopped. And number two, this is CRMX2, is still going. The AKS is also still going. And in fact, the AKS seems like it is probably the best in terms of keeping up with the original effect. But it's not, the CRMX2 version is not bad. They're very close. Okay, so now I'm gonna walk a little bit further. I don't know, CRMX2 and AKS are doing pretty good. Okay, so two stopped and the AKS is still going. Isn't that interesting? So I'm, I'm now like a third of the way into this studio. All transmitters were put at their max power. So for the Rat Pack AKS, it was 250 milliwatts and the Stardust, it was 280 milliwatts. The Rat Pack AKS did the best as I only briefly lost signal walking around the second stage but CRMX Square did better than regular CRMX from the Stardust. So if you need a nice throw, the AKS is still a very good single universe transmitter. Don't go throwing it out. I am now <laughs> one floor below the board and the Stardust. And the tube that is changing is in CRMX 2 mode. And the tube that is not is in CRMX 1 mode. I don't know about what everyone's talking about this half range thing, but CRMX 2 is clearly winning in this case and it is Highly impressive. Another cool thing about the Stardust is that you can actually have a mixture of wireless protocols. So if you have some products that can't update to CRMX squared, you can choose how many antennas you want in regular mode and how many you want in CRMX squared. 
In this setting, I'm using three antennas in CRMX squared mode, so I can have six universes of output from these three antennas, and then the last antenna will be for linking legacy products. You can also choose WDMX if you need to use that. The best thing about CRMX squared is the linking key. Like City Theatrical's Multiverse, you can now just enter this key on any light or receiver and it will seek out the transmitter with that same key, thus linking them together without having to press the link button on the actual transmitter. This is super nice because you can now put your transmitter in the middle of a grid on the stage way up high, never to physically have to go and relink lights or receivers. This is particularly useful with Asteras because you can easily batch add the linking key to a bunch of Asteras all at once. Plus, like a lot of popular transmitters, you can press link from the Stardust web utility. Perhaps the coolest thing about the linking key is that you can put this same linking key on another device because it will act as if it's this same device. So you have one Stardust, that lives at your stage and another you take with you on location. Maybe you even have a third you give to your riggers. They all have the same eight digit linking key. Now you have your Asteras that are paired to this linking key. When you take them on stage, they connect to your Stardust on the stage. When you take them to location, they will pair to the same linking key that is on your location Stardust. Your stage Stardust is still at the stage. Your location Stardust is now the one that it's pairing to. Maybe now half of your Asteras have to go to another location that a splinter unit is going to shoot at the same time. And guess what? You don't have to worry about relinking them because that breakaway set of Asteras can automatically pair to that same linking key that is on the Riggers Stardust. Now that is something we have all been waiting for for a long time and it is awesome to see it in action. You can even spoof a Stardust with a Luna or Aurora, but it will only spoof the A antenna. So that can definitely be handy in certain situations. What's most frustrating about the linking key though is the inconsistency I find in the labeling within Lumen Radio's own product line. When you link a device such as the Moonlight to a Stardust, it asks you what universe you want it to be. But what they mean is what antenna do you want to link to? So it should be like output A through H, but you can see it's showing universe one, three, five, and seven, which is confusing to the user. You can see how this is properly handled in Astera's app, and I know Lumen Radio just missed this, but it's discouraging because it's like, you guys are setting the standard here. Lumen Radio recommends against having multiple devices with the same linking key in the same area, which makes a lot of sense because they can get confused with who is transmitting signal and causing your lights to flicker. But I have a friend who particularly likes to exploit this with his Stardust, where he uses two in the same area to essentially extend coverage. Apparently it only works in regular CRMX mode, but they both have the same linking key. That's pretty interesting use case, but this is not recommended again by Lumen Radio. Now, all of these transceivers support RDM and have cognitive coexistence with Fleet Alliance. So if you use multiple transceivers, ideally with different linking keys in one area, they will work together by coordinating the spectrum every 10 milliseconds to allow for the least RF interference. Too bad all wireless devices on set can't uh, coordinate together. I'm looking at you, Teradek. So what is my take? I think the Moonlight is a solid receiver, but as a transmitter being limited to 100 milliwatts, at least in the US, is not what you want for your main transmitter. But pricing in at $535, it's a solid competitor to other receivers in the market and would definitely be one of my go-tos if I were buying wireless equipment today. The Luna doesn't make a whole lot of sense as a receiver as it's just a moonlight in a bigger package, but it does allow you to reach that 280 milliwatt transmission power. And for that, it can be a super handy transmitter for a small studio who needs something simple, but a little more robust than a moonlight at a good price. With the linking key though, this could also be a very nice single universe transmitter for all the pro users out there that you use to spoof antenna A on a Stardust to take a set of lights to another location without having to relink them to a new transmitter. And this would be your cheapest option to do so. I think the Aurora is going to be a solid transmitter, especially as Rat Pack struggles to deliver their products overseas, but without ethernet in, it's not really comparable to the AKS Plus. So that's just a huge bummer because it's like barely more than the Luna with a Wi-Fi chip, 
but for $450 more. That being said, it's still quite a bit less than a Rat Pack AKS Plus. The color screen is super nice for professional sets and easy onboard configuration, but the refresh to black every time you click on a menu item is super annoying. Lumen Radio says this is due to the 16 megahertz processor versus a quad core that runs their Stardust. So I guess it's just something you're gonna have to live with. Not that it's that big of a deal, but it's definitely something I wanted to mention for those in the market. I think there are definitely a few software tweaks that need to be done regardless before it's solid. But if you are an owner op who doesn't need more than a universe, this is still a great choice. The Stardust is obviously a surefire win and Lumen Radio sure lets you know that as all of the premium components and features are put in their flagship device. If you work in professional film, you gotta have one. Having eight universes available to wirelessly connect your lights and be able to so easily link and relink lights or change universes is so clutch in lighting today as we go crazy with the development of LEDs and pixels it's almost necessary to have. Plus, the range seems pretty phenomenal to me. Take one of these and put it on your cart and roll it around set, and you hardly ever have to lay out data anymore. Get another one, use the same linking key, and now your riggers can lay a second Stardust out ahead of time at a new location with units that they steal from you, first unit, without messing up your link. That's incredible. The biggest downside though of the Stardust is that the ethernet data going in doesn't pass through its Wi-Fi, So you couldn't plug this into a console and use the Stardust as an access point to remote into your console from an iPad. That would have been super nice, but you could have also potentially cliented into Wi-Fi on another Stardust and use that as like a point to point system, but omnidirectional, thus extending your range. That would have been super cool, but oh well, I guess I can dream big. My final remark is for those wondering if something else will pop up in the near future from a third party. I wouldn't count on it. Lumen Radio isn't allowing third parties to transmit CRMX squared. So the Stardust is the only device that can do this on the market and they limit their TMO2 chips they do sell to other manufacturers to 100 milliwatts. So as much as that sucks for other manufacturers, it should give you a pretty clear directive of what wireless transmitters to buy. That does it for my review on Lumen Radio's lineup. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Otherwise, I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.